Hey Internet again. This is the start of our adventure into Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, I'm Butley here. I did a quick intro video, so if you want to, to check that out or if you come from there, that's that's great. I'm just going to get rolling into the story and the new game here. What I, How this is going to probably play out, what I think I'm going to do is where the story, there's a lot of like story segments, so there might not be a lot of commentary through some of this. A lot of it's just going to be letting the game run and I'll probably just try and narrate in between events and, and just talk about some of the more stra strategical stuff as we go on so just yeah if you're just sort of here for a, a cruisy ride this is a pretty cool game and if you just want to see what happens this is pretty cool for that um, so if I go quiet for a lot of times it's just to show off the things and, and just to show the great story that they're piecing together with this one so let's get started let's see what happens The year was 1935 EC. Two powers controlled the continent. In the east, the sun rose over the autocratic East European Imperial Alliance, otherwise known as the Empire. In the west, a network of loosely allied democracies formed the Atlantic Federation. Both powers depended on a precious mineral ragnite for their survival and its growing scarcity led to the inevitable war. Hostilities began in the east when the Empire aggressively crossed their western border. The Atlantic Federation responded, and the Second European War was on. The Empire, with its vast military superiority, struck hard gaining ground in early victories and putting the Federation on the defensive. Emboldened by their progress and momentum, the Empire set their sights beyond the borders of the Federation. In neighboring Gallia, a peaceful principality along the sea, they found their next victim. Gallia had long maintained its neutrality in the tensions between the two superpowers. But the rich stores of Ragnite under the Gallian soil proved too tempting for the Empire. It amassed troops along the eastern border and invaded with all the force of an avalanche. Prologue. Gallia to arms. So, there you go. And this is a bit of a first look at how the how you sort of keep track of your story as it goes on. The cool thing is, as pieces of the story, or of, as the game progresses, pieces of the story are going to be written in this book as, as if it's being a tale told. And, like any sort of book that you've read, you can go back and forth, and you can, you can, you can't see it too much now, but I could rewatch that. I can go on to the next piece, and so... You're never gonna, like, you can forget pieces, but it's cut up into a lot of small segments. So there's plenty of time to play the game at your own pace. Like, this is a pretty cool little clever strategy game, but it shouldn't fatigue you like some of the more involved ones where you go forever and you never stop. Um, I think we'll just keep going for now. I don't want to say too much more. Just let the story play out. Just enjoy it as it comes and, and learn along with me how it goes, hey? Let's get going. March, 1935, outside the Gallian border town of Brühl. Residents are leaving the town before the invasion, headed inland towards the capital. been down this road in years. It really hasn't changed very much. Whoa. Already? Hey there, guys. You're beautiful. Starting early this year. 
You're heading upstream, huh? How's the water? Put your hands in the air, slowly. Haven't seen you around before. What's your name? Um, my name's Welkin, and you are... The one with the gun. We're with the Brutown Watch. I'm Alicia. Alicia Melchiot. So, I'm wondering what you've been writing in that little book you've got there. Imperial spies are in the area. <laughs> this book is nothing, really. I was just sketching the fish and, uh, you know... Uh... <laughs> yes, oh, I know. And you know there's a war on, don't you? All right then, Mr. Artist. We'll talk about fish sketching down at the station. Take him away. Thanks, fish. <laughs> and so we meet, uh, I guess, the main protagonist, Welkin. This is only the prologue, so I won't spoil too much about what's going on. Uh, let's cut to the next cinematic. Thank you. So you see, I really was just sketching. Maybe. Or, this could be some kind of secret code. And I intend to take my time finding out for sure. <sighs> Great. Welks? Is that you? Isara! Oh, your timing is perfect. What have you gotten yourself into now, Welkin? Wait. Don't you live at the old General's house? That's right. I'm General Gunther's daughter, Isara. You do know everyone's supposed to evacuate, right? Yes, I'm aware of that. My brother's here to help me move to the capital, but that may be difficult. I mean, unless you're willing to let him go, that is. Huh? Oh. <sighs> I apologize, but I was just doing my job, you know. I saw you with the notebook and thought you were a spy. Again, I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. Don't worry about it. I can see how I might have looked a little suspicious. Wilkes has a real passion for observing nature. That's why he's studying it at the university, right? Guilty as charged. I get so into it sometimes I forget where I am or that somebody might be watching me. <laughs> Gunfire! Everyone keep your heads down! Over there! Come on! just a small scouting team. We should be able to take them out. I'm with you. Okay, so we're under attack. Uh, just quickly, don't be too quick to judge the characters. They're not... I think the best thing about this game, in the short period of time they've seen it, all the characters, don't be too quick to bundle them in as, as tropes or one notes. They're all quite believable things they say and do it's actually really quite nice everyone so far from what I've seen playing a little bit ahead everyone develops really quite well over time so it's gonna be sort of a mix it's sort of pretty light-hearted but it's it's obviously fairly it's got its own sort of tone of emotion um, and it's it's a game about war and it, it explores obviously quite a lot of the emotion in wars I actually it's quite quite sad seeing people like civilians in that that scene just <coughs> excuse me 
that scene, they got caught by like a grenade and <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the end of their lives. It's the realities of, of the war they're in. So the game isn't isn't gonna like pull its punches when explaining that kind of sort of stuff and, and showing that off. We go into a bit of uh, a bit of an introduction on how to battle and how combat will work in this game. So as we get into the actual combat parts, you have to bear with me as I like clumsily move around the screen. I'm still getting used to the controls a little bit. Anyway, let's play it out. Let's see where we go from here. All right, or not? I know how to do that. We don't need to worry about that. Here we go. Okay, here's the plan. Gotta actually like the the map here. I think too, as you as we move into different locations and stuff, it gives you real, I guess, perspective of the valiant struggle of the the nation that they're in. You know, you're seeing the the war between the the two factions and these just being a small part of it, but it, it just gives you real perspective, and I always I appreciate that. Little map on the right here. Obviously, this is our. Uh, like our little scenario, the box around there is where we're going to be fighting in. It's good, they give you little tactical explanations. This should be pretty simple. Uh, conditions. I don't, we're not going to have Let's any worries for turns. Just stay calm and get it done. This is the pro the prelude, so there will probably be quite a lot of tutorials. I see three of them. That's three too many. Stay sharp. I wonder how much control I can explain Listen myself, or There's how much I, I can just explain. skip through. Okay, I will leave that. Here we go. So keep an eye on these little like, gold boxes, the command points. I'll explain them as we get going. That's basically how many actions per turn you get. So here we can see the map. Uh, let's move around like this. Obviously these guys are in red. All these things on the map, like these boxes, they're all things that really exist. A lot of this game is a lot of cover sort of shooting, which is cool. As you can see there's like a bit of cover there. These are my three troops, or our three troops I guess. Uh, oops, another one. Yeah, there they are. Look at that. Come on, Alicia, Woken, and our Watchmen. Um, they all have independent traits and abilities. Uh, I don't know if I can... Yeah, look at that. I won't go into all that stuff yet. Heck, I didn't even know what all that means yet. Um, yeah, there's just things. The, the point is, for now, HP is, is in there. Uh, AP is sort of actions when you click on them. I'll explain as we do this. So, I have three gold stars at the top command points. I can select someone and it uses one up and we go down into tactical and now the AP, the action points kicked in so that 800 he has means he has effectively 800 movement or 800 action for this turn for that one bar of command point that he had and I'll show what we can do with that now if it gives me control wads is your movement alright so I'm controlling him here, I can run up to this. It's going to tell me how to shoot, which I will explain instead of them. So I can go here, I can crouch behind the fire. I go press E here, I'm in target mode. I can like line up my crosshairs where I want to shoot. So here's the trick, right? I can hit him, it, it hits anywhere within the ring. That's his, my, like, any particular person's accuracy. So he's going to take about five shots to kill per damage that I hit. I'm going to, sorry, he's going to take about seven shots to kill. I've got five shots. And obviously it says per, per person versus armor. And area is like if there's any terrain elements like cover fire or anything. So if I go and get the crosshairs on his head, it's only two to kill. But as you can see, a greater part of him is missing from the crosshairs. So anyway, let's have a... Let's have a go at that and see if I can get like a headshot to finish him off, or two headshots. Now maybe it's the prologue and they just automatically hit, but in that case, yeah, I'll take it. That knocked him out into the two shots. 
That's just ending the turn. I think I still have action yes. left. I do. So, I can't shoot again. I've had my shooting action. But, I have heaps of um, points left. The yellow line that you can see is basically line of sight. So, obviously, I can see that guy over there. He can see me at the same time. He might shoot at me if I get too close. Here we go, cover. So it's showing what sort of things you can hide behind. Terrain is such a big part of this, not just line of sight like I've said. Like having the high ground or having clear shots of the head is important. Having cover, you can climb to get like climb up ladders to get pouches at uh, perches on a sentry and you can hide in grass and, and things like that later on as well. Like there's plenty in there. Just have a quick look at the orange bar down the bottom there sort of running out, it's like, can I get there, can I get there, can I get there, and he can see me. So, as you can see, I've kind of got a bit of a perch, it's going to be kind of hard to hit, they're going to still get me, and the longer I sit here, they will just keep shooting at me, so I can end my action, and go back to the tactical sort of view. Now, I've got CP, so I could take Welkin again, and just fire at that guy, or fire at anyone, like, I could use all three... CP on Welkin. If you look at the bottom right, he has green HP and then he has an orange bar underneath. So that action bar that we just used, his, uh, if we were to make him do another command action right now, which would mean he could shoot again, he would have, like in that case, it's about 66% of what his full action bar would be. So he wouldn't be able to quite cover as much ground. He wouldn't be able to run all the way back to the others, for example. But instead, I'm going to go get Alicia just so he Basically, there's a couple of targets for them to shoot at, and she can get just as far, probably even farther, because we can sort of cut the distance in which she has to move. Plus, she'll be able to take a better shot. So she's going to get right down to here. Take that. And again, body shots. Seven to kill. Five shots she's allowed. I can try and aim at the head and get most of the target on. Yeah, there you go. So she only hit him once in the head, and the other ones are in the body, so they don't do as much. Uh, I need to move him more. It's about as best to cover as she's going to get. In the current action. Now, I could go and get that guy, but I think what I want to do is take Welkin again, because this is an easy kill. You can press the Q and E to get a lineup. See here, it's one shot to kill the body. There's no point in spraying anywhere else or taking a risky shot. There's a good chance a couple of those are going to hit. Yes. And I'm going to use the rest of his turn. And we might stand up because it's quicker. And we'll get right in here. And that'll do. And that's the end of his action. Now, as you'll see at the top of our screen, oh, they're going to tell us what I'm about to tell you. We ran out of command points, CP. So, that means the turn turns over to them. We have nothing up the top. I can't show from the mouse. Um, but yeah, now he gets a move. We're going to have uh, the option to do some suppressive fire if he moves. Uh, yep, see? He decided to stop and shoot, otherwise he would just keep getting shot at with suppressive fire. Take this. And whenever you get shot at, there's like a counter attack available. And there he gave up the rest of his command points because he knew that any type of moves would get him shot. Yeah, that's all just command points. We'll talk about that more as we get going. For now, yeah, we all go. we need to do is take Welkin. He heals a little bit every turn. Most of them do. It's going to finish him off yeah. and get on to the next piece. There we go. Cut them down. We probably could have finished that in one turn if Welkin didn't have to stop and finish I off Felicia's shooting, happen. but that's okay. That's the risk I took for aiming for the, the more difficult shots. I'm see I got a B rank there. I think A rank or there might be S rank as well is when you actually do like what I said, you knock it off in one turn, maybe if I took less damage, 
by managing their positioning a bit better. Maybe I would have got more if I used all three squad members. I'm not entirely sure how the ranking works. Um, you earn experience, and the currency is Ducats, so that's um, the 500 number there as well. So they will be important in a little while, not until after the prologue, but still important to see how we're going, important to understand that they exist. That's your resources. You're going to be using that later. And let's go on. Let's finish off the prologue. Miss Melkiot. There's no other sign of the enemy. Good. Now, go keep watch and stay alert. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what should we do with the bodies, ma'am? We'll bury them. So it's begun. I'll do whatever it takes to protect the people of this town. I'll do it. Even going to war, I'll do it. Seeds from the lion's paw. It blooms white, small, simple, and strong. I want to be able to remember, once the war is over, that it wasn't all just people killing people. That even in war, there was also new life. On the 15th day, of the third month of the year 1935, the Empire began its assault in earnest. A formal declaration of war was made upon Gallia. Though it was only a small front in a massive continental assault, what followed would prove that a tiny nation could best a military giant. These events would tell a story of tragedy hidden in the mists of time. A story of courage and of trust, of persecution and hate, and of love blooming even through the flames of war. What follows is a record of this conflict and of those who fought, lived, and died. Chapter 1, In Defense of Brule. And there we go. So we've played through that. We've seen a little a little bit of, of what got these guys into the war, of what got some of our main characters into the fold. Um, we got through a little bit of combat. We saw just sort of how the turn-based thing works. Obviously, it, it grows over time. You get more people, more weapons, different classes, different techniques, different traits on all your people, and then you, you build up your arsenal and your military and your team over time. It's, there's RPG elements in this, there's um, just a lot of sort of general adventures. There's not too much in the way of, uh, what do you call it, like branching stories or anything like that. You can do side missions and things like that, but you're not going to make any major changes like go here or go there. At, at least not in the, the, yeah, the three or four chapters that I've seen so far. The next chapter is about Brule, which is the first city that we saw that was coming under under attack, and how the militia, led by, led by uh, Miss Melchior, Alicia, uh, how how they go about defending the city and, and what what's involved with that. We will leave that for another time, but for now, I just thought I would say I, I really enjoyed that. I feel like it gives a really good perspective from a storytelling element of of the battle of the people that we have and, and how it's affected them personally and, and how they're attached to the story. It's it's actually quite cool. And I like the elements of humanity. Welkin is obviously intelligent, 
but he's got that right sort of balance between he understands the severity of of what they're involved in but he also has the moment of pause and the knowledge of, of say in this case the flora and the um, the lion's flower petal bleeds uh, things <laughs> and he um, so he's got that that level of I don't know level headedness to you know, not get caught up in the moment and be respectful at that time too uh, and I think it's just another part of all the characters they all have depth Alicia is like determined but the minute you write her off as just being that being her character it's not she's got a heart and She's she's fighting for what she believes in. It's it's not as as clear cookie cutter as you like. And they'll these emotions will stick and they'll change and people will have opinions on different things. And I feel like everyone's a, their own character. I like the um, voice. The voice acting's really nice and the dialogue's actually it fits really smooth. I never like cringe at what people say because I think it all kind of fits what's going on. Yeah, there's little bits of jokes and goofiness thrown in there as well, but. That's all par for the course. Anyway, uh, that's going to be the end of episode 1. It's probably already gone for a little while. I'll leave it at that. I will start with chapter 1 next time. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And I'll um, speak to you guys next time. Cheers.